Yeah, Romy, I'm coming to you live for, from uh, Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement here in uh, West Nile, uh, one of the regions that hosts the largest number of refugees. Now, when you look at uh, Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement, this particular settlement, according to the records, it was established in 1991, uh, meaning that it should be uh, among the oldest uh, refugee settlements in the country. And when you look at this particular settlement, according to uh, the, the settlement commandant, this particular settlement means hosts about 129,764 refugees and these are mainly refugees from South Sudan uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Today the minister, uh, the state minister for uh, disaster preparedness and refugees that is uh, Honorable Esther is trying to have a tour in some of these refugee settlements and also visit some of the projects which have been established in these particular settlements. We started at the base camp uh, where she was able to interact interact with some of the leaders and also uh, the chairperson of the refugees. One issue that came up uh, during the meeting is that um, the chairperson for the refugees was able to present a memo uh, before the minister and also the UNHCR country representative, that is uh, Mr. Joel, and one of the issues that came up uh, the refugees have raised concern over the increased number of uh, learners in the uh, schools looking at some of the classrooms which are inadequate and also one of the issues that has come up they are calling upon uh, the government to increase on the number of scholarships uh, for some of the refugee students who normally perform best. I want to interact this afternoon uh, with the minister to find out Today she's having uh, the tour in this refugee settlements and she was able to observe what is on ground. Maybe us being uh, a government, what are some of the issues that she's going to take uh, within her desk and also discuss with the different ministries. Uh, Honorable, you're most welcome to NTVAT when we're looking at this particular visit. Maybe why this visit? Why are you having this visit? Right, thank you very much. My name is Esther Anyakun. I'm the State Minister for Relief, Disaster Preparedness and Refugees. Um, first of all, I'm in the West Nile, uh, part of Uganda. I've come to visit all the settlements and the base camps that we have in the, in, uh, uh, the Ministry of Refugees. And one, one, one good thing is that we handle a kind of um, a, a holistic approach when we are coming for these fields to see how had the refugees' uh, response handled and also the host communities. How, how are they benefiting from all the resources that we are getting, for example, from government of Uganda and also from the from the donor community. So one of the challenges I got today is I came to know that the Rhino camp and the base camp itself uh, uh, have issues of the border borderline between uh, Terego district and Madiokolo. And I think we are going to take this up very, very seriously uh, with the Minister of Lands and also the Prime Minister to see that the border issue should, uh, should be uh, resolved as soon as possible because now we find it hard when uh, a particular project is supposed to come either to Terogo uh, or it's supposed to go to Madiokolo, it's difficult to position it. So that those are the challenges that I've got to know here in the field. And of course, right now where we're talking right now, we have come to see a rice project where the, the refugees and the and host communities have been doing rice farming together. Uh, the purpose of doing some of these projects is to make sure we create uh, a kind of... Uh, harmonize environment mutual uh, set up with, with, with the communities because when you go to some countries apart from Uganda that open the open door policy for the refugees in other camps uh, in other countries the refugees are still living in camps which is also being a very big challenge but for us as Uganda the, the modalities that we have of having having them settle in settlements it's something that is really uh, I should say and thank the government of Uganda for doing that Thank you. Okay. Maybe, uh, let's, maybe lastly, what can you say about uh, the issue raised by uh, the refugee chairperson on the issue of classrooms and also scholarships? No, already I, I have been in touch with the uh, European Union. They are giving funding to most of these partners, like for example, they give uh, the giving to uh, save the children and also to make sure that they expand uh, some temporary structures for these schools. This has been happening in West, uh, Western, Western uh, setup. So it must be also here, and I'm very sure we're going to follow up with this together with UNHCR to see how space is created for these uh, learners. Like, for example, they say right now in P1, they have over 900 pupils in P1. That, that is really a big number. And they have only three streams. So we have to create space for these kids to be able to expand and be able to learn according to, to observe the SOPs. Okay. 
Honorable, thank you so much for giving us your time. Uh, so, Ramya, this is a message uh, from uh, the Honorable um, uh, State Minister for uh, Disaster Preparedness and Refugees uh, looking at some of her visit. Of course, she didn't confirm here that uh, on the issues of inadequate classrooms, she's getting in touch with the, uh, the officials from European Union to see how they can be in person to improvise other means so that these learners can be accommodated. Next, according to her, uh, the team will also be visiting some of the settlements in Yumbe district, Koboko, Ajuman, and then it will proceed uh, to northern Uganda district. And also as NTV, we shall keep uh, ensuring that we give you updates in the studio and also our audience on each and every development that goes on here as the team proceeds to the different settlements here in West Nile region. Back to you in the studio as you continue with NTV at 1.